Hey folks, let's learn something new about the oil and gas industry. All right, we have a series of three interviews that we shot at NAEP. And you may go, Mark, what is NAEP? Well, NAEP stands for North American Prospect Expo, and it's one of our favorite shows of the year. There's actually a bunch of them going throughout the year, um, but this one was actually the one that was in August 19th and 20th in Houston, uh, 2015. Now, the reason we love NAEP, it's the only show we know where deals are actually done on the floor. It is a show for upstream oil and gas operators, landmen, but it's also a great place to learn about what's going on in the industry. So if you have an interest in, in the oil and gas industry, our upstream, um, our operators, you need to make plans to go to NAEP. We go every year. It's a great show. So hopefully these three interviews help get a feel for what's going on. Enjoy. Yeah. So um, early morning here at NAEP, we're sitting here with John Trueblood. Hey, John. Good to see you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. And so you um, are a family-owned business, uh, Truebud Resources, right? Yes, sir. That's correct. And, and, and so we started uh, what well, was originally my company. Uh, my background, I started with a major oil company, Amico, who no longer exists now. They're, yeah, you're dating yourself when you say Amico. Yeah, right. So they were bought by BP. Uh, I started with them in the 1980. And then in 88, left Amico and formed Trueblood Resources. Uh, so we're C-Corp. Uh, very small right now there's five of us uh the largest we've ever been i think is eight uh so we're really uh, a traditional independent oil and gas operator yeah and it's changed a lot now there's not there's not a lot of those left really for potentially and then i brought my father sort of more active into the business uh, about 15 years ago uh, he was actually at public companies and he sold his last public company that uh, one uh, pioneer owns one of them and simrex the other and, and i said father you need to be at the office working so he still is. So that's why it's still, right now, it's sort of more a family company. And the thing that I love that y'all do, y'all aren't just an operator. Y'all get immersed into the local communities, the local population. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yes, we sure can. So um, my background was land originally uh, at Amico. Uh, and fortunately, uh, Amico was a really tidy place to get excellent experience. So one of my goals at Amico was to learn everything I could. So I spent a lot of time with the engineers, a lot of time with the geologists, geophysicists, and um, regulatory attorneys. So ultimately when I uh, formed my own business, uh, I started to, have to wear a lot of hats. So I went from being really sort of a business guy to more technical. So I'm a kind of a, a quasi. So I always had the um, what's understanding how important it was to reach out when you're doing business to whoever you're doing business with. and one of the things that I saw consistently uh, in Oklahoma, which I only worked uh, my last two years in Amico, but I saw it was a very mature area, it had produced oil and gas for many, many years, but I still saw that there was a little bit of this um, oil here and local landowner there, and yet we really had so much in common because it's their minerals. I could pick my rig up and I could take it to another county, I could take it to another state, but their minerals are there, and how they find somebody to husband their assets, I thought was critical. So my, and I frankly didn't have any money, still don't have any money, and so rather than just coming in with a lot of money and, and frankly, here's money and not telling you the whole story, when I sat down and I said, you know, here's our plan. I mean, here's what we see not only technically, but here's how we're gonna operate, here's how we're gonna use the surface, and not only did I start, uh, and spent a lot of time doing this, so rather than just showing up or sending them a letter and, uh, and a lease and some money, sat down with them and showed them the, the play. And, and, and originally, how I came to that idea was, uh, again, because of really lack of financing, I wanted to put my money into, the, into drilling. So rather, and as I said to the landowners, and I think it's somewhat still the same, when I buy a lease from you, it's just another opportunity to drill a dry hole. Now, today with horizontal drilling, it's a little different. And we, our company targets original uh, or, or, or vertical production that is, is produced or targets that are produced for many, many years vertically. So it, it's not really exploratory, but the risk is, I think, still here in this business. So I would sit down with the landowners, describe our history, describe the company, and we'd actually look at, the, at the, the, what the plan was. So we'd, we'd, we'd you know, here's, here's why we think there could be oil. Here's our, here's our vision. And, and I, you know, I'm not sure... You know, a lot of times people didn't want to do that, I think, because they were worried about the proprietary part of it. I just, you know, I took the risk and said, listen, 
it's 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 challenging. I still think to find commercial oil and gas. My father. Let's but forget about me. My father. He's done a long time, and so to show them really the risk that we're taking, the importance, and and, and they. I think the ones, the particular the landowners I found that had had some production, understand the real value. So it wasn't just how much money I'm going to get up front for for doing the deal. It was really who am I going to do business with, and then the other part that I always have done with them as I said you know if I get run over by a truck or, or you know because we're small maybe it's me but if, if if the property or the the lease that we have gets assigned which is common we always have partners and I tell them that we typically would operate less now but but I said you know we always get partners so I want you to have a really good piece of paper a really fair piece I don't care if it's you know the widows and orphans if you will that don't understand I mean in this area it's very sophisticated so many have council that's involved but even the attorney started to recommend our company because essentially it was very simple we did what we said we were going to do now I put it in writing too because again so they had a nice piece of paper so what I saw sometimes is people would come in or, or different companies and and they'd get a, a form of lease that was probably more in their favor and and they just pay more money and so the owner would not really worried about it as much but ultimately if that lease produces it may be there for 40 years or longer I mean I'm I'm doing business on in areas that have produced uh, since the 1960s so that's over that's you know 60 years almost so that's that's a, we, we did it for the two fundamental reasons one I, we thought was appropriate and correct two it also in the long run when I established that close relationship to them early when I needed something later because things always change whether it was access to water or a pipeline or we needed more time or you know, different zones may uh, no longer be held by the lease and I had another idea and I wanted to come back and try it they would say oh, okay you know because I would communicate so that's how we really developed that basic idea so you basically just did good fair business and you were transparent about this and you basically partnered with the landowners instead of them being a, a resource to you and yes the the um, my goal is still my goal. I'm going to be there next week, and uh, there's a, one fellow named Harold Wonger, uh, another uh, 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 Kenton Burgess. Uh, they're they're local, so I'm in this area called Fort Supply, and I'll see them next week. And, and we, we're working on a a very innovative play called Oswego now that has produced many years uh, of limestone vertically, and, and we're, we're we're struggling particularly now with low oil prices to to really encourage partners to join us and, and, and experiment. And, and there is beginning to be some hard data that's showing it to be a, a pretty exciting opportunity. But for them, you know, one of my goals has been, because they, they were very um, cooperative in working with our company and, and allowing us enough time on the leases. As I said to them, I have this idea today, but I will assure you that it's going to change and that I will need time but here's the plan, and here's what I ultimately see in your area as far as the future potential, technically, for more oil and gas to be found. And so, so my goal, yes, was to treat them more like a joint venture partner. And, and rather, it's instead of us against them, you know, oil versus the, the, the owner, we, we, we make our, we both, from a commercial standpoint, we both make our money at the wellhead. They get a royalty. I mean, they don't have the risk, but it's their land. And I respect it as their land. And I said to them, whether you do a deal with our company or you do a deal with somebody, just partner up with, with somebody you think ultimately is going to husband your assets. And again, the, the leases get signed and sold and, and, and a lot of things happen, but get something that's, that's started. Because again, we're, we're more um, incubators. Again, we're a small company. Uh, we have limited capital. We have a lot of technical expertise. We're niche players. We, we've been in this uh, five-county area in Oklahoma for 25 years and developing strong local knowledge, not only subsurface on the geology, but then logistics and uh, relationships. And that's still our model. And, and then the uh, challenge, and, it was, and as, op as well as opportunity, is how do we bring that into who needs voting to what we do? Because the incubating side of this business is, I think it's coming back. I think with the, quote, shale plays that uh, probably, what, now 10 years plus old, I think some of the fundamentals um, 
became more apparent over time, depending on the basin you were in, that the fundamentals is, my partner once said, or, or, or my Amico buddies, the technical buddies said, the fundamentals of uh, source seal and trap, in other words, what geologic fundamentals allow it to actually be commercial. Uh, and so that's, um, you know, so it's been a combination, but again, the, that part of our business is, is, is fundamental and consistent, and that is, is communicating, working, um, and, and, and as you said, being transparent, but it's really simpler than that. It's just, it's more fun. It's, 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 more, it's just better. It's more appropriate, and, and, uh, and I think people respect that. Yeah, they do, and y'all are doing a really great job in Oklahoma. Let's change subject real quick. You and I have something in common. We both mentor students. How did you get into that? Well, um, my father uh, is an interesting man, Harry Trueblood. He, um, he's 90 now. Uh, he's a petroleum engineer by training. Uh, he is uh, from Childress, Texas. He grew up with minimal uh, uh, resources financially. Uh, in fact, at some points, they were, they were basically very poor. Uh, and he was fortunate enough, uh, after World War II, he, he was in uh, the Pacific. He got the GI Bill, went to college. Uh, he's a very driven human being, very entrepreneurial. Uh, he was a founder of Vail. Some people know where Vail is, and, and he did this other resort called Princeville in Hawaii, and he's been involved in uh, seven public companies he founded. And so very entrepreneurial fellow. But he attributed much of his opportunity to education. And although, you know, we, we, we've got a lot of dimensions to us, uh, you know, business, spiritual, ed educational, academic, but fundamentally, I think both he and I agree that one of the few solutions we've found to change lives is education. And he essentially had the philosophy that, uh, and he had, he had some real uh, financial success in his businesses. But all his money's in a foundation called the Harry Trueblood Foundation, and his goal was to educate his children to the best of the, the ability they can qualify for, and then expect them to make a living, and, and we basically give our money away. And, and uh, and it's, it, he's just a, he's a generous man. So I think part of the uh, training, if you will, as a child of generosity, uh, not only just financial, but time, your, your spirit, was, was where it started. And, and then I had fortune, um, and, and, and you know, it's been pretty up and down in, in, in our business right now, it's tough as nails, but we've had some success financially. And uh, I just, you know, have enough stuff I, I just wanted to give my time and money away. And so it was, it's all levels. I, 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 it's, it's really academically based, uh, uh, secondary schools, some primary schools and uh, colleges. And that's really what got me in the mentoring. And, and, uh, and the students, whether, I mean, the little kids you play with, the, the, the teenagers are pretty complex, but, but you can touch their heart. And the college kids, you know, they're, they're, assuming they have some ambition, eventually they're looking for jobs, they're looking for uh, internships, and they've been extraordinarily appreciative of, of the time and the information and, and the sharing, uh, as well as scholarships. So both me personally and my father, we've been involved in, in scholarships for many, many years, uh, um, and also the arts, uh, more me than my father. Uh, our, our goal is there's a lot of different aspects of education uh, the arts being, you know, ballet, symphony, theater, and so that's that's essentially all our money and time. All our, 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 our now, we're, of course, and as my father said, he said the portfolio of the foundation was pretty beat up, and my, you know, I do stuff separate from the foundation as well. We're pretty beat up right now, but but uh, we're, we'll, we'll be back. And I and I tell all the folks that we get involved with that, uh, you know, we're committed, and so we we uh, we just believe that it it, it really changes lives. John, thank you so much. It's, um, it's great that you're giving something back. We wish you much success with your business, and thanks for spending time with our audience. All right. That was super fun, and, and I'll, I'll look forward to uh, visiting with you more. Yeah. So, folks, I hope this helped. We will see you next time. Stop.